Dr. Bond, I'd like to hear from you. Chairman Waxman, Ranking Member Davis, and members of the committee, um, I've spent the last 12 years modeling and measuring sources of black carbon, and I'm pleased to share my expertise about the role of black carbon in climate change. I commend your committee for continuing this discussion at a national level, and I'm honored to participate. Thank you very much for your invitation. I will speak to you on sources of black carbon, its role in the climate system, and the potential for mitigation. These are the major points of my presentation, which are supported further in my written testimony. First, the major sources of black carbon are known. Second, historically clean alternatives reduce black carbon emissions. This transition occurs naturally during economic development, but it can be accelerated. Third, black carbon and other products of incomplete combustion should be considered together with greenhouse gases. Fourth, mitigation options that address black carbon, particularly in developed countries, are not always cost effective compared to greenhouse gases when climate benefits alone are considered. Fifth, some options can economically reduce warming. These offer major co-benefits in terms of human health and local environmental protection. Uh, the first slide there is showing that uh, black carbon emissions in 2000 came from four categories, diesel engines for transportation or industrial use, solid fuels such as wood and coal for cooking and heating, open forest and savanna burning, both natural and for land clearing, and solid fuel use in industrial combustion. The comparative magnitude of each contribution will change as these estimates improve, but the major sources will neither vanish nor grow to dominate the whole picture. Second slide, please. Uh, fuel use in the United States has grown phenomenally since World War II, but black carbon emissions have decreased due to cleaner technology fuels. Estimates of the North American emission trend are broadly consistent with the Arctic record. History suggests a consistent trajectory during a nation's economic development. Initially, emissions come from solid fuels for heating and cooking. These fade as incomes increase and clean household energy is introduced. Next, emissions from the industrial sector increased and are reduced by regulation. In the meantime, internal combustion engines for transportation and other mobile power proliferate and eventually dominate. It is rarely possible to reduce greenhouse gases alone, aerosols alone, or black carbon alone. Evaluating all emissions from a single source is more comprehensive and more accurate than looking at the effects of individual chemical species, such as carbon dioxide only. No current efforts on climate mitigation are evaluated in this way. However, rapid changes, such as those occurring in the Arctic, suggest that no opportunity should be missed. Particles from diesel engines and cook stoves are strongly light absorbing and therefore warming, despite the presence of non-absorbing cooling particles from these sources. Particles from open biomass burning, however, are on the border between cooling and warming. Next slide, please. Uh, this figure shows a very preliminary evaluation of cost effectiveness in terms of CO2 equivalent reductions. Here I discuss only methods of e eliminating existing black carbon emissions. Mitigation options for solid fuel combustions in include improving wood cook stoves and promoting cleaner fuels, including distillate fossil fuels. This would also reduce exposure to indoor smoke, a major health hazard. Reducing vehicle emissions is possible through accelerated retirement, retrofits, and targeting of high emitters. The figure I show supports some optimism because some costs are close to worthwhile even from a climate protection perspective. Some reductions appear affordable while some appear costly. However, consideration of immediate benefits, health and environmental protection, and Arctic snow forcing will decrease the costs as well. However, caution is also necessary. First, many of the least expensive mitigation actions can be found in developing countries. Industrialized countries have already enacted many of the least expensive aerosol reductions, and the remaining black carbon is expensive to mitigate. Thus, acknowledging the role of black carbon in the climate system is unlikely to detract developed countries from reducing greenhouse gases. Second, reductions may be challenging, despite strong justification for climate protection. 
the two measures that appear most promising, reducing diesel emissions and improving cooking fuels, Im involve millions of small sources and operators whose ability to afford the relatively low cost investments is limited. In conclusion, black carbon reductions can contribute to climate protection and exploration of this possibility should proceed rapidly, although cautiously. Reducing emissions can eliminate warming quickly and in some cases economically. These measures also result in major health and environmental benefits. However, they are not always cost effective for climate purposes alone, especially in industrialized countries, and they reduce warming only in the short term. Thank you.